Today, I'm going to talk about the way we use light to understand and optimize medicines. First, I'd like you to take a look at what I have in my hands. I have a tablet in one hand and a croissant in the other. They look very different, but I'd like you to take a moment to think about what they actually have in common. And they're more similar than you might imagine. They both have been made according to a recipe. They both include carefully selected ingredients with a defined amount of each ingredient. Not too much, not too little. And the ingredients have been mixed a certain way and processed to get either this tablet or the croissant. So, making a medicine, in this case a tablet, is like baking. But let's also think about the differences between the tablet and the croissant. What happens if the croissant recipe is not perfect or we're not so skilled at following the recipe? The croissant won't taste so good or it won't have that nice melt-in-your-mouth feeling. That's not good, but it's not so dangerous. We can work on improving the recipe and making it taste better perhaps by trial and error, until we're happy with the result. But what happens if the tablet recipe is not perfect? Let's think about what ingredients are in the tablet. Well, one of the tablet ingredients, of course, is the drug. That's the very reason we're taking the tablet. We take the tablet because we want these drug molecules to treat a headache or our high blood pressure, or cancer, for example. But there are other important ingredients in the tablet too. Each has its own function. Some ingredients help the tablet to be formed in the first place. Others protect the drug from degrading during storage in pharmacy or in your own home, while other, con other ingredients control what happens to the tablet after we swallow it. So what does happen? to the tablet once we swallow it. Well, it travels to our stomach and our intestine. And then the liquids there allow the drug molecules to leave the tablet. And the drug molecules pass into our blood before reaching the place in our body where we need it. Our head, for example, to treat a headache, or a tumor to treat cancer. What is crucially important here is the amount of drug in our blood at any one time. There should not be too much drug or too little drug in the blood. Too little, our headache won't go away. Too much, we get unwanted side effects. Some of them can be dangerous. So, what affects how much drug is in the blood? It partly depends on what happens to the tablet in our stomach after we have swallowed it. The tablet might break apart and release the drug molecules all at once. Then, the drug quickly reaches the blood in high amounts. And we want this if the drug should act quickly to relieve our headache, for example. Or, the tablet might stay whole and release the drug molecules slowly over the whole day. We would want this slow drug release if, for example, we want to keep our blood pressure constant all day not too high and not too low. So, how do we control what happens to the tablet, whether it breaks apart or not, and how fast the drug molecules are released from the tablet, even if it does not break apart? This is where that recipe, the tablet recipe, or tablet design, is so crucial. If we don't get the recipe right, we might not get the right drug release from the tablet, and it won't reach the blood at precisely the rate we need. The medicine might not work at all, or not work how we intended. In other words, the consequences of the tablet recipe not being perfect can be deadly serious. This is not just a case of a bad tasting croissant. So, what do we need to ensure the drug molecules are released from the tablet in the way we need? so that the medicine is safe and effective. Obviously, we need a perfectly designed tablet. 
We need the right ingredients in addition to the drug. We need them in the right amounts, and they need to be combined in a very precise way to get the correct tablet structure. We need to know and control exactly where all of the ingredients in the tablet are. And that, until recently, has been difficult at best, and in many cases impossible. And this is why I want to talk about the power of light with modern medicines today. I'm going to talk about how our research group uses light in new ways to design safer and more effective medicines. If I take this laser pointer here, and I shine it on the tablet. You can see the tablet turns red where it hits the tablet. <clears throat> and this is due to the tablet scattering the light. But there are other, more subtle interactions between the light and the tablet too. Some of the light is being absorbed by the tablet and heating it up. Some of the light is even being scattered in a way that produces light with new colours. And this is a process known as Raman scattering. Its name comes from the famous Indian physicist, Sir C. V. Raman, who was one of the first to observe the scattered light with new colours. When I shone the laser onto the tablet, you couldn't see these different colours because our own eyes are not sensitive to, to detect it, but modern optical sensors can. So what exactly determines what new colours are scattered from the tablet? Well, it depends what ingredients we have in the tablet. And this means we can analyse the scattered light to identify exactly what is in the tablet. We can use this to check we have the right ingredients in the right amounts in the tablet, or even to detect counterfeit medicines. You may have seen this type of detection being used on a border control programme to detect illegal drugs at the airport. The analysis gets even more powerful if we combine the laser with a microscope. Then we can detect exactly where each ingredient is in the tablet and how it's interacting with the other ingredients in the tablet. And when I say exactly where, I mean down to a thousandth of a millimetre or less. That's about the precision about 70 times thinner than a strand of your own hair. Is this level of precision needed? Do we need to understand the tablet structure on such a level? The short answer is yes. Let me illustrate this with two examples. The first is the surface of the tablet. You may have noticed that tablets are often coated. Coatings can be just used to make the medicine look or taste nicer. But often, they have a much more important function. They stop the medicine breaking apart in the stomach. And depending on the thickness of the coating, they control how fast the molecules are released from the tablet. Our research group has shown that a special type of laser microscope that detects scattering of light with different colors, it's called a coherent Raman microscope, can be used to image tablet coating distributions down to a thousandth of a millimeter. We have shown that differences in the coating thickness of a few thousandths of a millimeter, as detected by this microscope, can mean the drug is released from the tablet more than five times faster or slower. That can be the difference between a medicine being safe and effective or ineffective and dangerous. The second example I would like to share with you involves crystals. You may be surprised to learn that tablets sometimes contain thousands of crystals. Not diamond crystals, but drug crystals. The number and size of these crystals affect how the drug is released from the tablet into the liquid in the stomach or intestine. Most people think of crystals as nice and attractive but drug crystals can be bad news. If there are too many or are they too big, the drug may be released from the tablet too slowly and not enough drug will reach your blood. We have used the 
coherent Raman microscope to detect and image single tiny crystals in tablets much smaller than the thickness of a human hair. Such levels of crystals have been difficult or impossible to detect in the past. We have shown even a few of these tiny crystals can have a dramatic effect on drug release from the tablets. And that can mean the difference between a medicine being safe and effective or ineffective. These are just two examples showing the power of light to understand and optimize the structure or design of medicines. But I hope that during this presentation, I have convinced you about how light is providing amazing new opportunities to precisely understand and control design, tablet design. While our research group is based at the Faculty of Pharmacy at the University of Helsinki, our research could not be done without the help of all sorts of experts. We collaborate with optical scientists, analytical chemists, pharmaceutical scientists, statisticians and clinicians. These experts are in Finland and Europe and further afield, as far as New Zealand. Together, we use light in new ways to better understand and optimise medicine design. The new levels of understanding make the medicine safer and more effective and they can prevent very costly drug development failures. We don't just look at tablets, we look at many types of medicine. Capsules, injections, inhaled medicines, to name a few. The insights gained are important no matter what the medicine is used for, be it cancer, high blood pressure, or a simple headache. So, the next time you take a medicine, whatever the reason, Spare a thought for how it was designed. And perhaps you will remember that behind the scenes, we and other research groups are employing light in amazing new ways to make the medicine you take even safer and more effective. <laughs>